Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. And now your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to Moscone, everybody. This is theCUBE, and we're here in Moscone North at the street level. Stop by and see us. Sakti Chandra is here. He's the Director of Solutions Marketing for Extreme IO at EMC, and Pablo Roche is the Director of Technical Marketing at VMware. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. It's good to see you. Hey, thanks for having us. So you're welcome. So you guys got the lab going today, uh, the performance lab, and you got some interesting architectures. You're talking about Flash. Pablo, set it up. What's sure, the lab sure. all about? So the, the hands-on labs are a great way for attendees to come in and actually touch the real products. So these are our virtualized labs that run in our clouds. And uh, when we started working very early on with you guys, we, we had a need for uh, to be able to meet the needs of a bootstorms that we have. So we have extreme loads come in in very, very, very short amount of times. So usually we have uh, 4,000 users that walk through during the course of what's going to take a lab. Well, on average, we do about 100,000 labs for the whole event and we deliver 10,000 labs. Each lab is about 12 VMs, so it's a lot of capacity uh, being delivered all the time. So, uh, so you have some serious infrastructure at Moscone to we do, we do. <laughs> set this stuff up, right? Yes, we do, we do. Uh, so, Sakti, talk about, from your standpoint, uh, Extreme IO and Flash. Well, give, first of all, give us the update. You know, what's happening with, with the business, and then how does it tie into the the hands-on lab. Sure, absolutely. You know, again, glad to be here on theCUBE again. So, Extreme IO, as you might have seen the announcement that came out in the, in the last day or two, um, we hold about 34% of the market share. Mm -hmm. We just crossed a billion dollars in revenue. So to put this in context and perspective, I think the product has been out in the market for 588 days, and then from zero dollars to north of a billion is the ramp that we have seen in the market. So truly, I think it's a testimony of how Flash as a market has sort of evolved from sort of, you know, back in the days it was one PCIe card that went into the server to address one particular pain point. Then it was, hey, I'll put Flash into maybe a VDI use case or a database use case, but we are seeing our customers sort of adopt Flash across the data center, multiple uh, workloads and use cases. So really making the transformation from the data center perspective going from the traditional disk-based systems to a complete Flash-based architecture. So at the high level, I think that is the context. And uh, what we are really proud of is really obviously our customers, close to about 1,700 global deployments in production and growing. So I just have to sort of interject here. So back, it was a year ago, not last year, last EMC World, two EMC Worlds ago. You remember, I mean, EMC was the first to put Flash inside the array and you know, to cause the firestorm. And then you got behind. You went out, you made an acquisition, and then you know, the market was kind of taking shots at you because you were mm -hmm. late to market. At a year ago at EMC World, I said, I, I predict that by VMworld 2015, EMC will be the market leader, hands down, and, and Flash. I think you probably did it earlier than that. But, um, and, but the reason was the momentum that the, I, I heard from the customers, the excitement that I heard, and, and you guys know how to sell storage. So um, <laughs> what's the relationship between what you guys have done you know, with Flash and what's going on with the hands-on lab? So obviously it's a great partnership Absolutely. between VMware and uh, EMC to uh, power the hands-on lab. Um, again, you know, when we started talking with Pablo and his team about sort of the requirements of hands-on lab, and the key here, Dave, is it's not just hands-on lab in a silo, it is what VMware can do with such an infrastructure beyond the hands-on lab as well. So the hidden secret here is the hands-on lab does not end here at VMworld. It kind of carries the journey. Yes. Um, they have really stood up a truly internal private cloud where they host hands-on lab for obviously the show here in San Francisco, the show in Europe, but also year round, there are multiple business units within VMware who consume the private cloud services and that's all being powered by the Extreme IO uh, storage array. Okay, so, so talk more about the hands-on lab. So hands-on means I can walk in and start playing absolutely, with it? Absolutely, absolutely. Talk about the objectives and sure. how it actually all works. So, so our, our mission is very simple. We want every user on the planet to take a lab. We want them to experience our products. The hands-on labs are absolutely free, and after the event, we roll out the new labs. This is the part that we were talking about, the online. So online, as of January 2013, we've delivered 400,000 labs, and we have 125,000 active, unique users. 
uh, you know, we have uh, highest ratings in terms of quality satisfaction, and that has a lot to do with the storage back end. We never worry about our storage. It's always there, it's always on. We are deploying it in every new location that we do. So we're very, very happy to work with you guys. So 125,000 active, unique users? That's yes. a phenomenal number, 400,000 hands-on labs. So, so what's the, what do these labs look like? What sure, are the sure, sort of sure. workloads? Maybe? So in, in general, uh, we have a lab for every product that we actively market. So you'll find labs uh, all around our SDDC architecture. So there's a lot of vSphere labs. There's a lot of uh, uh, end user computing labs, a lot of mobility labs. Some of the most interesting labs uh, this year are obviously the EMC lab, but we also have the AirWatch lab. And the AirWatch lab uses our cloud to connect into the main AirWatch cloud. So we have a lot of interaction between the two clouds. We're able to manage the two clouds seamlessly for our users. So it's very exciting for us. Okay, so you, 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 it sounds like you have N labs for each product. I don't think you have 400,000 products, right? So no, 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 no. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> and so, so you've got you know different you know versions, different derivatives. Or, sure, sure, sure. So the 400,000 number is the, the total amount of labs taken um, by our users ah, okay. since we rolled it out online. All right, so that's uh, a, in so, the so lab is. Uh, a, a lab is a sequence. Of yes, yes. It's a mom, it's a, a deployment in time. And uh, we have 41 different items in the catalog. And they range uh, around all the products. We even have partner labs as well. Okay, so talk about the extreme, let's unpack the extreme IO lab. Sure. What's in there and what's it look like? What would I see if I come in and use the lab? So I think the beauty is, again, um, very less so on the storage pieces. It is what the end user sees in terms of the different apps mm -hmm. and the different products of VMware. And um, to unpack sort of extreme I.O., the way we like to tell the story is it's very similar to how the virtualization market evolved, which is back in the day when the hypervisor was launched, that was the biggest thing, but very quickly it became a commodity, and we think Flash is going the same direction too. So if you unpack extreme I.O., it is really all the rich data services that we have built on top of the Flash um, media. And the beauty is with extreme I.O., it is always on, it is in memory, and you, in fact, that we don't even allow our customers to turn any one of those services off. So inline deduplication, inline compression, thin provisioning, encryption, all these factors are baked in um, within the product. And one of the feature sets that we are really proud of is the copy data management services. And uh, you and I were talking about just before the, um, the talk day, which is really if you're a customer and if you're used to having one production instance and multiple copies derive off the production instance, and it could be because your finance team needs it, your analytics team needs it, or your DevOps team needs it. With Extreme IO, the way we have built the product, all the copy management is done in memory. So there is no physical uh, tax on creating another copy, and you get the same performance of the storage irrespective of which end user is using it. Right, so let's talk about that a little bit. So the, the copy data management piece is very interesting. EMC was, I think, the, really the first to start promoting that. Mm -hmm. I think you uncovered it because your customers figured it out and yep. said, hey, this is really cool. So we're talking about data sharing, mm -hmm. right? So when I, when I have a, a, a you know, data set, I, I copy it. I don't know, how, but IDC probably has some numbers on it, 30 times on average or 15 times, whatever it is. And each of those copies sits on, traditionally, on some other spinning disk at consumed space, even if it's space efficient, right? Mm. Um, and, but to get appropriate performance, I can't share a single copy across a number of use cases. I need one for my test dev, or multiple for my test dev, my data warehouse, my backup, my DR, whatever. Um, with Flash, one, I think one or more of your customers said, I can share uh, one copy with multiple use cases. Absolutely, right. and really, you know, uh, again, at the foundation, it is. It comes back to the architecture of the array, but the architecture really allows the customers to impact the business agility that a media like Flash can enable. So, for instance, prior to using, you know, something like what Extreme IO delivers, customers were forced to give their developers, let's say, a limited number of copies because it's additional cost. And also the infrastructure which the DevOps team uh, was supported on was usually not the tier one storage array. It was tier two or tier three because of cost factors. Right. And also the amount of time it took to do any one of those processes was not as fast as any one of those teams would uh, like to. But with the fact that we can deliver all this with one single flash enabled array, 
it really allows the customers not only save on the app OPEX and the, on the CAPEX, but it allows them to um, be more agile in terms of what they can do upfront in terms of the business processes. Pablo, I want to ask you, so how do you decide what labs to spin up? We actually let the users decide. So they can pick any lab from our catalog and we'll spin up the lab within two or three minutes. And we can do this because of Extreme IO. So uh, when we present, when a user walks in to the catalog, to the seat, they can pick the lab that they want and we're ready to serve it up to them within seconds. But the lab is, I mean, the, 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 the lab, the virtual lab, if you will, is not static, right? You're constantly adding Absolutely. to it, is that right? So, Absolutely. So what, can, to talk a little. So the, the, the workload is very similar to uh, maybe uh, FaceTiming. It's very choppy uh, performance, and that's really where the storage comes in, because the user, as they're interacting with the console, they can actually use our products. So they're opening up the vSphere client, they're creating clusters, so it's a real environment. And it's really intensive on, the, on our storage I.O. And we're able to do that because of Extreme I.O. Okay, and, and so kind of what's next for the lab? I mean, what, you, give us a little roadmap. Sure, sure, so, so today we're very strong in, in America and U.S. Uh, right after VMworld Europe, we're expanding to uh, Asia, China and Japan and the, the southern countries. So we expand a, a global expansion in terms of our service. We're localizing a lot of our labs, so native uh, Japanese, Chinese, Korean speakers can take the lab as easy as possible. Hmm. Okay, and, and so Sakti, I wonder if I could come back to you and, and just talk about what kind of feedback you've received from people who have either gone through the lab or you know, seen it, I mean, what are they saying? So I think the excitement is over the roof in terms of um, just the sheer upfront, the user experience, right? As Pablo was saying, the catalog is massive in terms of the number of products that are listed there. But the end user experience is they come in, they sit up, and then they push the button. The lab needs to be served up almost instantaneously mm -hmm. because that split second makes a huge difference in end user experience. And then the, the more curious folks go back behind the scenes to kind of look at, okay, so what's powering the infrastructure in terms of how you measure in terms of latency or IOPS or the scale. And then they kind of you know, delve into the architecture and the beauty of Extreme I.O. Uh, so immediately they related back into some of the use cases that they're facing internally. Hey, my database application, maybe you know, the reason why uh, it is slowing up or how I could improve it, they can quickly point it back into their own personal sort of use case and then they relate to it. So do you tease them to go deeper or how, you know, how does that work? I, I yeah, think it's self-selecting. Yeah. They, they naturally are hooked and they want to do more. So how about... <laughs> What kind of analytics do you have? From so we, we run uh, surveys and uh, get feedback on the content. We're listening every day on, on what we're seeing. Uh, we're also very big on uh, the user interactions so we can kind of predict if, if a lab's going to fail or not and we fix them in time. Um, our SAT ratings from contents usually in the very high 90s, so we have a huge fan base and they're always expanding. And, are you doing clickstream analytics or no? Uh, we do uh, third party sur survey methods is who we use. They're integrated on the platform and for us it was just an easy so it's, solution. You go into the lab, you poke around and then when you're finished, survey pops up. Survey thing, pops up and we also have a, 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 a analytics on how far in you go into the lab and what areas you, you stay on and we can tune the content uh, in real time if you will. Okay, and, and, and so the there's not like a certification at the end. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's, it's no, a tour, no. right? It's a demonstration. It's self-serve, right? self-select. Yeah. Um, we do find the use cases that uh, a lot of people use it to practice for certification, certification exams. Uh, we also see our field use it for proof of concepts or demos. Mm -hmm. And obviously for customers to come in and evaluate features. You, and, and I presume people come back, you get repeat visitors. They right? always come back, yeah. yeah. How yeah. long do they typically spend inside the... So they're uh, spending about uh, 90 minutes here on average. On 90 the, minutes? You get an hour and a half poking around your lab. Dedicated user time. It's a long time. That's, that's longer than people watch our videos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're the captive audience. They, they enjoy the product. They're all very well documented. Another key part about it is that we have product experts on the floor to answer questions or to walk users through it. So it's very exciting. It's, uh, wow, that is tremendous. And I was going to just say, you know, it, 
kind of mimics a typical life cycle in a VM farm. So when Pablo talks about these courses for uh, an hour and a half, right. you spin up a VM, you use the VM, you delete the VM, and then you spin them up again. So it is probably the most intense of the workloads sure. when you look at a typical sort of a VM farm uh, that gets spun up in these hands-on labs. So any infrastructure that you put in to support it, if it can stand that kind of a stress, then you know, I bet you know, it can meet any one of the enterprise workloads out there. So how does a customer, you're talking about before, the customer can pick and choose from the catalog mm -hmm. and then apply it to his or her problem. So it's pretty robust catalog. I mean, yes. you've got an in, you know, infinite number of combinations, that yeah. sounds like. And so I'm interested, this is like a great right. freebie for customers and the yeah, sales absolutely. guys must love it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so how does it translate? I mean, what have you, how, back, back up, how long have you been doing this? Uh, three years. So three years, and, and you must see a direct impact on business. I mean, we're, we're seeing a phenomenal uptick. Um, I think mainly it's because customers can actually touch the product. So we're seeing it you know, equally or even more effective than white papers or presentations. Because we're in an age now where customers you know, they don't necessarily want to wait through a video, they want to pop right in and, and get access to the product. Uh, think about the time they save. They don't have to set up hardware, they don't have to configure anything, they don't have to get licenses. All they need is a modern browser, and they can pop themselves into a lab. So I mean, it's essentially a, you know, a little the form of POC, really, right? I mean, it's, it's genius. And look at the explosion of the products within VMware, right? Yeah, so in the last right. three years, you know, it went yeah. from one product company to really multifaceted firm and for them to kind of expose each one of the products as they come and mature, and give them real access, as Pablo was yeah. mentioning, for them to get hands-on, it's probably the best venue to do it. Well, we were talking to, to Carl about this yesterday, Carl mm -hmm. Eschenbach, I mean, you know, we've seen VMware expand its total available market by coming out with you know, zillions of products, great, but at the same time, you've got to figure out, that's the complexity, you know, from yeah. a go-to-market standpoint, and the channel and the, and the sales team, and so, I would imagine from a from a from an account executive standpoint, well, don't take my word for it, go check it out, or I can't really answer these questions, but let's go play around a little bit. That's tremendous. And the channel has access to it as they well. They absolutely right? love it. We have a program called HO on the Box, and it allows our channel partners to actually reserve capacity and run their own workshops. So we've seen an immense, a tremendous uptick on that and we welcome our partners to participate in. It's amazing, I mean, I'm really impressed. I love these customer freebies, especially ones that, that drive business. I mean, it's a win-win. And uh, Absolutely. so that's great. Sakti and Pablo, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE today and sharing the story, it's All great. Right. I'm really excited for you guys. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you very much. All right, pleasure. All right. All right, keep right there, everybody. We're back with our next guest. This is day three, we're live from VMworld 2015. We're right back, this is theCUBE.